What's up, Cal Gang? Today we're going to be solving this triple integral by converting to spherical coordinates. So we look at this and it looks really ugly. So we're not going to solve it this way. We're going to convert it to a way that's a lot easier. So what we need to do is we need to find our bounds. So let's write out what we know. So we see dz is first and it correlates to these two things. No big deal. So we have x squared plus y squared is less than z, but z is less than square root two minus x squared minus y squared. All right, cool. We still look at this and we think, well, we know that already. So how do we convert this to spherical? Well, let's look at this first. We know that this, if we square both sides, we get z is equal to, or z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. This is just a cone. A cone that's just perfectly 45 degrees. It's beautiful. And now if we look at this side and we square both sides, we get z squared is equal to two minus x squared minus y squared. And we notice that if we move these to the other side, we get x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to two, which means that this is a sphere with a radius two. Or we can write that as the squared is equal to two, or the is equal to two, square root of two. Okay, cool. Now, Let's draw this, all right? Let's see what's going on. All right? We don't even need to worry about these other bounds, except we do, actually, so we'll get to that later. So let's draw what we know. So what we're gonna do is, what I like to do with these, is you like to set one of our variables that are like x or y, you set it equal to zero, and then it gives you like a flat as if you were looking at it like page on. So we're gonna do this set y is equal to zero. Therefore, this is gonna be our z x plane. So what we'll get is z is equal to x, or z, z is equal to positive negative x. So it's gonna look like this. And this is gonna be z squared plus x squared is equal to two, which is just a circle with radius squared of two. So let's see, this is one, this is square root of two. So, and then now you can see here that we have either this area, this area, this area, this area. Which area is it gonna be? Well, we need to look at these. So we know that y is greater than zero, but less than square root of one minus x squared. Basically, this is gonna be the top of the circle, but basically all we need to know is that y is greater than zero. And we also know this is true about x. Zero is greater than x, it's greater than, or it's less than equal to one. So that means that x is greater than zero, so it knocks out any of these regions. And we know that y, if we did this with y, we noticed that too. So our region is gonna be this, this thing here. And we notice that x goes from zero to one, and actually this intercepts at one, one. You don't actually need that to solve this for this problem, but that's a good piece of information to know, and you should know how to solve it. Basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna set the x squared plus y squared is equal to this x squared plus y squared, and it'll give you z is equal to one, and then you plug that into the equation to find what x and y would equal at that point. That's important to know. But anyway, now that we have this picture here, we can really solve anything we want. So we know that the is equal to square root of two. So we know that it goes from zero, because it starts here, it goes all the way out to square root of two. We know that rho, or we know that phi, phi goes from zero, this is where phi starts, and it goes down, curving down, until it hits this point, which it ends here. And just for a normal cone, that's gonna be pi over four, because it's a 45 degree angle. So zero is less than phi, it's less than pi over four. And theta is gonna go to zero to two pi, because we're making a full rotation, actually, I lied, I caught you guys. We're not making a full rotation. You see, because x is greater than one, or x is greater than zero, and y is greater than zero. So basically, I'm gonna graph this thing in 3D really quick. Uh, that's z, so x and y are greater than zero. So it's gonna be, this is the area basically. And it's gonna be our cone basically coming out, like, you know, like so. It's gonna be this area. So that means that theta has to go from zero to pi over two.
All right, now we have our bounds, and all we have to do now is set up our integral. So our integral is going to look like this. This is our fade on the outside. Our phi on the inside, and our rho on the outside. Now we have x, y here. We know that x is equal to, um, we know that x is equal to rho, sine of phi, sine, or cosine of theta, and y is equal to rho, sine of phi, sine of theta. So let's write that out. And then also, anytime you do spherical, we have to add rho squared, sine, phi, and then our differentials. And there is our ginormous integral, which can be simplified and will be simplified, and I'm going to start solving this now, after it took me six minutes to set it up. All right, here's our integral. You see I simplified by combining all of these you know, combining everything together to get exponents. So if we solve this, which I'm gonna do now, it's gonna take me quite a minute, and I'm probably just gonna speed this part up, because I, I think you guys know how to do this, it's just a lot of work. But this will become d to the five over five, square root of two, so it's gonna be four square root of two. I'm just gonna bring it out because it's a constant. Zero to pi over two. Um, we can bring our sine, theta, cosine, theta in here. That's going to be 0 to pi over 4, sine, 3, phi, phi, d, theta. All right, so if you're looking at this, this is kind of something we learned in Calc 2, I'm pretty sure. But you can actually break this up into sine, phi, sine, squared, phi. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna work on this part. This becomes zero to pi over four of sine phi, one minus cosine squared phi d phi. And what you can do here is you can actually set up a u sub. u is equal to cosine, wow, um, great, phi du is equal to sine, negative du is equal to sine phi u of 0, cosine of 0 is 1, u of pi over 4, cosine of pi over 4 is equal to square root of 2 over 2. All right, so now we have our new thing. 0, 2, never mind. So we have a negative here, and this, as you'll notice, our first, our top bound, or, okay, our lower bound is bigger than our bottom bound. So what you can do is you can swap them, and when you swap them, you have to bring a negative out sine of five, which is perfect for us, because it'll get rid of this negative sign. So that's why this is gonna go from square root of two over two to one instead. And it's gonna be one minus u squared du. All right, now we can solve from here. This is gonna be u minus u to the third over three from one square root of two over two. This is gonna be equal to one minus one third minus square root of two over two plus two square root of two over 24, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Okay, uh, we should simplify this now because uh, I get ahead of the curve, you know. Okay, this is one over three is ugly right here, right? Here. How can we simplify this? Well, everything can fit into that, so it's gonna be 24 over 24 minus uh, 8 over 24 minus 12 square root of 2 over 24 plus 2 square root of 2 over 24. This is gonna to simplify to 16 over 24 minus uh, 10 square root of 2 over 24. And this can become uh, two. Actually, let's let's keep it all together. It's gonna be eight minus 
5 square root of 2 over 12. All right, after all this work, we can finally bring this up here. Oh, uh, hold on. Oh, that was not good. I have dust all over my hands. Okay, so we have 4 square root of 2 over 5 times 8 minus 5 square root of 2 over 12. I really hope I didn't mess this up. 0 to pi over 2, sine theta, cosine theta, d theta. All right. All right, ignore the cut, but uh, we're going to solve this now. So here we need to do a u sub. So we're going to say u is equal to sine of theta, du is equal to negative cosine of theta, u of 0 is equal to 0, u of pi over 2 is equal to 1. Never mind, there's not a negative there. I'm a little, little dead brain right now. All right, so what is this going to be? Well, let's simplify this first. So 5 times 6, this is over 20. And 32, square root of 2 minus 24 integral from 0 to 1 of u du. This integral just becomes 1 half. Solve it, I guess. Uh, I don't know how you don't know that this is 1 half, but do it. So it's going to be 32 square root of 2. Hold up, this is not 24, this is a 5. So this is 20, this is 40. Minus 40 over 120. How can we break this down? Well, we can try. Okay, so actually, I'm going to keep this out. 60, oh my god, 60, 1 half. So this simplifies to 8 square root of 2 minus 10 over. 15, 1 half. And this is equal to 4 square root of 2 minus 5 over 15. This is our final answer. That's a 5. Boom. How long have we been going for? 18 minutes? Yo, and you guys didn't even see like half of that because I messed up like five times. Because this is a 5 and I just read it as a 3 and I solved it again. I was like, why did I get the wrong answer? You guys have to have good handwriting to be good at math, 